Greetings, listeners. We are back for another exciting, well, fun session of Romance of the Ship Kingdoms. Ow. Everyone has been, well, actually, no. I can't say everyone. I have to go back. Back to when that battle between Merlin and Thara's Dune really went off. Because now I'm going to play everything from a different side. Because we need to join Bella because she wasn't at that battle. When Thara's Dune launched his black hole and Merlin launched his level 9 and launched his massive fireball in response, Bella was sleeping at the yeah. bar. At the bar just relaxing. And then when those two massive energies collided... It caused, well, the wild space and the astral plant, astral sea to just shake. <sighs> Bella, you feel your bed just <sighs> like a vibrating bed. You're just shaking violently. Okay. Gary, Gary the Mimic's just, <clears throat> oh, mm, I don't need this. I have morning sickness, damn it. I'm a Mimic with a baby now. Okay. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm going back to sleep. Yes, yes. <laughs> if anything happens i'll give you a heads up i was told that you will be given special care i'm gary okay. by the way okay i'm just gonna and bella's just gonna essentially become one with the blankets you know fully ensconced in them kind of thing she wants sleep sleep is good Ooh, this is going to be so fun all righty bella Yes. Deep in your sleep, you have shut off everything. It's as if you've literally cast a spell sleep on yourself from how much of a rock you are at this moment. And Excellent. I'm so happy for this because you you hear nothing as some people come to the door and Gary, a uh, pair of eyes and a mouth appear on the door and he's just, may I help you? And this is no savage army no mercenaries no bounty hunters no 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 this is just a a gander of very very beautiful high elves they're just done to the nines oh no why, i'm in danger why uh why we are the why we are the unchained queen's personal personal entourage and we are here to doll her up bring her prepare her for a day of pure pampering to prepare her for her new life to step into her throne you don't hear as gary's just oh, well as, as you command i will open up uh, who am i to deny such a high command and the door opens and <laughs> they come in and i'm not gonna lie it's Terrifying the fact that just it's just two two of the entourage, one and they're wearing I cannot express the fact that they're very dainty. They have that hourglass form because they're wearing the very exaggerated hoop dress that gives the just yeah. the massive badunka dunk. And they have yeah. the hot, and they have the high hair done up. But it just uh, takes one it just takes one on each end to pick up your bed. Oh uh, right, no. All right, girls, it is time we shall go. And we sh and sh we shall lead her to a life of ma simply magnifique and extravagance. And do be careful because that is our new queen. So ah, uh, there we go. Oh. And they carry you easily because Gary opens the doorway very wide to and for the bed to go through. You don't hear as you go through town. The, your entourage is just throwing rose petals in front of you and doing cartwheels and buck. And hand tuck springs in front of you. It's Lily. It's very amazing to see that these women done up all like this are doing all this. I can imagine. I can imagine. And, and I'm just. And Phoenix, me, the player, is just going, I'm in danger. Shit. <laughs> oh, and then. And Bella then we, get, and then we get to the peak. <laughs> and then. <clears throat> oh, no, 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 no. I am sorry, my my emperor, but it is but it is quite it's you know it is against tradition for the bride to see the groom before the wedding, and I am sorry, but you cannot disturb Bella, and you cannot see her yet, so you must go off with you before Tharsdun can even open his mouth. She grabs him by the sides of his cheeks and pulls his head in, and she just yeah. has a haunting smile on her face. Her eyes are closed. Do uh, do do remember Tharsdun? I just inhabit this mortal farm, but I was the god that chose to just sit away. I could have easily destroyed you, but remember, I just, I chose 
this way because you promised me great fun. So do not disturb what I am enjoying. And she's crushing so hard, you can his teeth are rattling and cracking. Oh boy! And he, she lets go of his face, and he spits out a couple of his molars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, Genova. I do not mean any disrespect. No, 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 no. Do not, do not try to speak with your words to me. Your little words, your little promises will not work. No, off, go, shoo, shoo, shoo. Or do you want to lose another one of your souls today? Because I see you lost one to Merlin and his little, and his friends and uh, Order of the Solar Dragon. <clears throat> so, please, off you go. Tharzun responds to Genova's wish. Come, girls, we go to the sheep. And... One of the, like, clearly just now one of the, one of these, I'm not going to lie, they're not high elves. They're something much, much older and much more ancient. And one of them now is just twirling the bed on her finger like a basketball. <laughs> Yee, wee, 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 wee. And they all happily follow behind, just all with the same swaying, mimicking motion of Genova. Oh, boy. Yeah. As you're going on to the ship, she passes by. She goes, oh. My son, my beautiful god, do make sure Thazdun keeps to his promise. Her son is wearing what looks like a silver pauldron on one shoulder, and he has like a black wing coming off his right. Oh, I know, I know. I get the reference now. Yay! <laughs> he has very long silver hair, and he has what looks like a 12-foot long katana on his back. <laughs> I get the reference. Yay! <laughs> my little Sefi. Can you do this for your mother? Yes, mom. Yes, mother. And <sighs> in a black mist, he's gone. The one-winged angel goes to watch over Thar's Dune. <laughs> I'm so happy I get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> I got the big smile on my face, listeners. So, Bella, you're still safe. You're warm in your bed, covered in your blanket. Yes. And you don't even notice the... <laughs> very elaborate musical number going on before you. <laughs> no, she is just she's in a very deep sleep, a very much needed deep sleep. Where everything, where everything is fine and the world has not imploded. She you don't even hear as it's as if they're saying, Be my guest <laughs> as they're taking you up to this palace. <laughs> okay. And finally, you're led to your new life, your new bedroom safe it's yours and don't worry your brothers were brought along begrudgingly <laughs> sin just followed with her arms crossed like um i know what you i know what you ladies are and i am not going to argue <laughs> i am not going to argue with you and i did not know you still existed oh shit <laughs> solaris um samael both of you shut the fuck up like literally they're both just being dragged now at this point just what are they dragged by the ears i hope oh yes you just see this massive owlbear getting dragged by his beak and then solaris getting dragged by the tip of his top of his ear and he's just ow, 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 ow. <laughs> perfect they're led to a sacred bread bedroom and they are strictly told that if they go anywhere near your bedroom yeah. avernus they will know things that are worse than avernus worse than bator Worse than anything they could ever imagine. And they reveal their real forms to them. And still to this day, Samael and and your brother Solaris are just doing like Shaggy and Scooby every time they see him. Like this big old owlbear jumps into Solaris's arms and they just shake violently until they're gone. Aww. Your brother's just, oh, Solaris, I don't think we're safe anymore. That's right, bro. Aww. <laughs> whatever they showed them was horrifying ancient yep. primordial yep. yep bella have you opened yes. up yet it's not up to me it's up to you because um, you're safe you're cozy yeah after that's look she's probably gonna sleep for at least a couple more hours um before she starts to stir. and it's just like you know that reluctance to actually wake up mm -hmm. yeah there's lot going on there and it's like grumpy groaning head under pillows trying to get back to sleep for another hour until she eventually just gives up and pokes her head out it feels why is feels really heavy as it 
What the hell? Wait. Wait, what? Pull your blanket. Yeah. And there's Metatron just cuddling up, just holding you around your waist. Mm. Ah. Mom? Oh, what are you- no. Oh, no, your mom's over there, Bella. No. No, you are my mom. You're the well, one who raised me. Mm, I I know, my dear. Oh, look at you. You're, you're a mess. Oh, goodness. <laughs> look at my girl. What's going on? This isn't where I last fell asleep. Mm, well, and she's just looking around the room now. What would Drell- Bella's dream bedroom be? Um, gods, I haven't thought about that. Uh, it would be, there would definitely be flame motifs all around. Um, again, it would be very understated, but also very, you know, that the old money kind of feel where you don't show off your wealth, but it is still very, you just know everything within cost a lot of money kind of, kind of thing. Excellent. And what would be the perfect breakfast for Bella as you're seeing your dream bedroom? Everything you've ever imagined, hoped for that you were thinking of is here. What's, and then you see a desk. Oh, it would be lots of fruit. Um, definitely, um, eggs benedict on toast and definitely spiced ham and probably at least a gallon of lemon juice at least like she's one of those people who could just you know you know the she can just like literally eat lemon and it's like delicious to her excellent so i need to make sure i describe this okay correctly okay so what do you see holding your big gallon of orange juice? Lemon juice. Sorry, lemon juice. Is what looks like to be, you, okay, you thought it would be a fire genosi, but this is definitely just a fire elemental. Ooh. But he's wearing a very extravagant suit with a, ass, with a magnificent ascot with a gleaming fire aesthetic gym in the middle. Ooh. He has like... Cuffs on his jacket that look like they end in gold, but then go to a white, large cuff. So it kind of looks like a candle end when you look at his hands, going to his hands. And he has these oh. brilliant golden pants. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lumea, and oh. I am your personal maitre d'. I am the one who will make sure you are happy, your butler. Now, what shall Lumea do for you, my dear? Is, um, is that lemon juice for me? <laughs> this whole meal is for you, my dear. Oh. Uh, and I hope I made it just the way you like it. Perfect. Y- you did, yes. Thank you. And she will take the lemon juice and just start straight chugging it down. Like- ah, oui, c'est magnifique, <laughs> my dear. You, oh, <laughs> no need to rush. If you want more, your, your lumière. She'll be happy to oh, accommodate. Of course. of course. Um, thank you. This is all so wonderful. Um, and, uh, do you know what? Despite the strangeness of everything, she's just gonna go for her breakfast and start eating and drinking and enjoying the meal. It's like everything is perfect. Lumiere's just ha ha. I shall leave you until it is time for you to meet your the me- meet the other ladies so they may take you to get the... Uh, well, you need a wedding dress and we need to get you looking your best for what is to come. Wait, wedding? I'm engaged <sighs> again? Oh, my dear, you you are what? not just engaged, you are meant to be the new queen of the cluster. Wait, I... Huh. Um, okay? She just, she, Bella tilts her head like, she is very confused at this point. See uh, the confusion on your face. Now you see, my dear, we know everything. We know about your previous engagement to the fake celestial by the name of Michael. Because he was not truly a celestial, that engagement is null and void. You do not need to worry about it. It is off of your shoulders. Yes, and then I was engaged to someone by the name of T, and then I yes, went that, with this that, fortune teller and 
the engagement was nullified, so who am I engaged to now? <laughs> Some simple fortune teller thinks he can sever the, the string of fate? No, 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 my dear. No, your, your, your benefactor, your king, he waits for you. That T you see, that is the Unchained Emperor. That is the great, well, we just call him Tharstan. She drops her knife and fork. What? Uh, yeah. I am yes, not getting yes. married to him. No. Oh, but my dear, it, when he looks upon you, we see a different light in his eye. Please, he says he can change. Just give him a chance, my dear. One chance is all he gets. One chance. And if he does anything I don't like, I will fireball his ass. And then I will find a way to chain him down and do it over and over and over and over again. I am done being toyed with. I am what? done having my life dictated. Well, at my... the same time, if he can continue providing me with such fineries as this, then perhaps he is useful. Now also, you've... Also, he might be useful in getting revenge on the fake Michael who killed my father, killed Father Limick. Oh, my dear, we still are mourning your great father. Know that your, well, we can just say your person, your secret admirer, he is preparing a memorial for your father to show his pledging, his true love for you, that he would do anything for you. So, because you give him this chance, I must relay the news. And, my dear, if he was to try such a thing, he would have to try to get through the great Lumiere. And <laughs> the great Lumiere may appear weak, but I, I am very powerful. I believe you, yes. And I would give my life to protect you. Well, that is Lumiere's that... promise to you. I hope it doesn't come that, down to that. I don't want more people to die because of me. Ah. <gasps> No, 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 no. And do not think that this is because of me being forced for my job. No, 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 Bella. You see, I come from a long line of species, a long line of people. We believe in the, the wheels of fate, the wheels of change. And we believe in the prophecies. I have seen what I was supposed to do for you. And I agree with you. I follow my fate gladly. All right. So go ahead. Take your time. Enjoy your time with your mother. And this was again your secret admirer, who made sure to seek her out and bring her back to you. And he even went so far as to bring back your birth mother for you. She is outside. When you are ready, I shall go get her for you. You will not have no surprises, my dear. Not while Lumiere is by your side. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now, please, take your time. I will be... Right out, my dear. And Bella does take her time just eating and digesting the news. Like, her life. Why is this her life? Hmm, Bella, as you're sitting there eating your food, thinking this, you're sitting in front of a beautiful, beautiful mirror. Yeah. But as you're looking at it, your reflection's not in the mirror. Uh oh. Would you read the inscription on the mirror out loud? Um, is there anything I have to look at to read it? It's clearly on the top of the mirror. No, I mean, if this is another another reference, I'm not getting it. Oh, it's from um Snow White. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Oh, mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Why, that would be you, my, my future queen. <laughs> Greetings! Ha <laughs> ha! It's been so long since I've been summoned. You know, he promised me when my body was destroyed and I had to inhabit this mirror that I would finally meet my future master. But I've been waiting here for, what was it, like three million years now? Ha ha! Hello, my new master. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm, and Bella's tail just starts to twitch behind her. I am rapidly reaching the point where I'm starting to think it is better if I go back to bed and pretend whatever is going on today is just a wild fever dream of mine. If you want to go to bed, that is your decision to make. No one will force you to do anything, your highness. Well, my future highness. I'm here for you. When I say my master, this is no trick. I, I take um, these very serious. Do you not know how genies work? 
Um, DM. Would I? Yes. Would I? Uh, I'm aware. Um, it's been it's been a day, so you'll have to forgive me. I I understand. I understand, my master. I can se- I can sense your tension. Is there anything I may do to exist? Do you want to see anyone? Do you want to see anywhere? Do you want to see a truth? What would you like? I want to see a truth. <gasps> Yay, master! You're the best. I'm very happy. Allow me to reveal a truth. Okay, do so. <sighs> Here we go. The mirror swirls. An image starts to appear. Bella, you see, yeah. this is when you get to see a truth. You see Thar's Dune. Well, Thar's Tan. He's sitting in his room, just fawning over you. His subjects come, and they're telling you, and they're just telling him that you have to calm down. You can't be such a beast. <laughs> you gotta show her the, your better side. Maybe change out of that dark armor. Come on, it's time to get a new face about you. Okay. You see, the truth is, he genuinely has feelings for you. Ha, my master, how do you... Then there's a truth for you. Are you happy? Do you want to know another? Or would you like to see somewhere, see someplace? The choice is yours. Um, another truth, please? Happily, my master. Now here's my question. This is when we get get to the heart of the matter. How deep do you want to go? How deep of a truth do you want? You decide for me. I, regardless of how deep it goes, I suspect this will be another revelation and another thought to consider. So you, you choose. Uh, do you, do you have a name, by the way? Oh yes, you may call me Jin. All right, Jin. Then you choose. You choose my master. How- it, I will be happy to choose. And my master, I have gazed deep into your history. You may not believe me. But even just this little short of a conversation, I know you now. Okay. And I've seen everything. I will reveal the truth. Okay. Bella, the image swirls, and you see Dr. Timothy Martis. Okay. Before he was the fool, before he was the doctor that you know. This was so long ago. You see him with this very elegant, beautiful looking woman with just long and elaborate golden chains around her neck. And then you see what looks like a green, dark green spear impale her in the chest, lifting her to the sky. You see, Doctor, you see Timothy Mortis collapse to his knees, tears in his eyes, everything shattering. But here's the truth: the one who was the portrayer of this attack, this murder, yeah. was Father Lemick. That... And, and the image goes away. My master, that is a deep truth for you. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need the rest after after such a feat. Are you happy? Um, I have a lot to think about. Uh, thank, thank you. Did I do a good job? Uh, um, yes. Thank you, my master. In the next, well, give me three days of rest, and I will be prepared to provide you with another truth, a vision, because it, after using such of the deep, deep truth, it takes all my power. So I must rest for three days. I, I understand. Will, I will see you, my master. Thank you. Okay. Um, DM, would I re- would I recognize who that woman was in the vision? Um, this is where it gets very disturbing. You recognize the visage of her, but yeah. how it could she could be there? But there are still subtle differences, though. It's not the same. It's just she looks like her because that's okay. looks like Cleopatra. Okay. The one that was always by Father Lemmick's side. So <laughs> basically the secretary of the flock. Yeah. And would I know, or, or would Bella know that Cleopatra is Tiamat? Because I know Bella summoned Tiamat spirit once. Yes. And that's when, thank you for beating me to the punch, because the full image that you know this from is from the one that is your sister, who is revealed to be your sister, Tiamat, the one whose soul is in your bracer. Yeah. Well, your left bracer. Yeah, that is, there is definitely a lot to process. And I think Bella is going to continue finishing up the rest of her breakfast. Just trying not to think too hard on everything at this point. It's, it is a lot for her to take in. And there's a gentle... One, two, three on the door, and Lumiere 
pokes his head in a little bit. Ah, yes, my 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 dear, my dear Bella. I yes. wanted to ask, are you well enough to receive just one person, one guest? I. Or would you like me to send them away? Uh, send them in. Of course. Please. And I will stay out right here. And if you need me, Lumiere will be right in to deal with. Of course, yes. Thank you. Lumiere, you are a... Lumiere, you are a big silly. <laughs> Besides, you you and me know we had a spicy encounter back in the past. <clears throat> Marie, you may have held my heart in the past, but that was the past, Marie. But, oh, you are a spicy little thing. <sighs> oh, I need a glass of water now. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> now clearly this was the ringleader that came to get you. Yeah. You clearly heard her introduce herself as Marie. She looks at you and she does a dipping bow and she fully introduces herself. My name is Ma... Ma this, she calls herself Marie. This is outside of character. This is Genova. Yeah. She goes, my name is Marie Antoinette and I am, I am going to be your new, well, your new teacher and, well, a member of your party, your party and your wedding party. Okay. You'll have to forgive me if I'm a little I'm sure of everything. It's a, it's been quite another day. Um I woke up maybe an hour ago and then I've had some truths dumped onto me. Uh, apparently I'm going to be marrying Thara's Dune. <clears throat> um so I'm not even gonna make you roll perception. You notice that Marie looks at the mirror really pissed off when you mentioned the truths. But she looks back to you with the same, like, gentle smile, and she has her eyes closed again. I asked my genie Jin to give me two truths, as I, oh. might, as I figured I might as well know what I'm getting myself into. Oh, oh. hmm. No, you did and nothing I wrong. Can, and I can promise you this. If Thoros Jin does anything I do not like, I am going to figure out a way to fireball his ass, then chain him down, and repeatedly fireball his ass for all eternity. Ah, do not, do not worry. We would not allow him to do anything to you, my dear, because that was part of the deal. But if we were to bring you here, that you would be under our protection. All right. Um, I am also aware that apparently I am wanted... As a bride to make babies, or a baby, so we'll oh. see how that goes. Oh. And no, 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 it, it is your choice if you wish to do such things and have children. No one is going to force you to do such a thing. Good, because the moment they try is the moment I get is the moment. Well, let's just say certain pieces of the anatomy are definitely going to be char-grilled. Are you still sitting down at the mirror, by the way? Um, yes. Yes, sort of. I mean, depending on where the food table is to the mirror, I'm definitely sitting down so, eating. M Marie is now, she's behind you, and she's picked up a brush, and she started brushing your hair. Okay. And she's doing it very gently, like a, essentially like a mother. Oh. No, I, oh, no, 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 I understand. You have been through so much, and your dear mother, Meta, has, she has informed me of everything, and do not worry. Marie is here now, and I will make sure that you are very safe and comfortable and know that this is your life, your decisions, my dear. Good. You will be forced to do nothing. I really hope that holds true. Oh. Because I, I like this luxury. It's what, I, it's what I was brought up in in the flock, and I don't want to lose, lose it. Not again. And here I might as well describe... Um, Bella's hair, when it's out out of its usual braids, is just like ripple, wavy, almost wavy. Like you can tell she has it in braids like 99.99% .99 of the time. It's just beautiful, silvery, long hair, like down to down to down to the small of her back easily. Yeah, um. And you see, my dear, now if you do not even wish to marry him, if I could always throw a Let's say it's a hat in the ring. My dear son would always be a great match for you, my dear. You two would just be oh so cute. Um, and uh, let me tell you, Thales Dune doesn't even know I say this. I just think you would make such a cute couple. But uh, no, no, no. That's just a little secret between us girls. I have not even met your son. Oh, I mean, if you would allow me to introduce you. 
But perhaps, um, perhaps later? Of course, my dear. Ah, you misunderstand me, my, my dear Bella. No, Marie would never just stumble this upon. I meant in time, my dear, when you're okay. ready. All right. <laughs> you have been through so much. And she's finished brushing your hair out and... Now she's actually doing a very beautiful braid on it, elaborate braiding, like French braiding. Ooh. It, she's, oh, it just looks really great how she's doing your hair. Yeah. It's just, just you, it, it hurts, Maddie. It hurts me, especially as a mother, to hear that you've just had all of this forced on you. No, no, no. Things change right now. Melly is, no, as of right now, I am changing things, Bella. When you are ready, we shall go out. Go out. I'll go out about the town, and we shall start doing introductions. T- today, when today or however long you need, we shall just call it a girl time. All right. And what do you say to that, my dear? I th- I think that would be very nice. Just m- more shopping. Um, you know, it was not even two, three days ago when I thought I was getting married to Michael and I was and I would be a leader of the flock. And then Michael turns out to be not who he is and he kills Father Limick, who killed my sister, um, who was married to uh, a good friend um, who I know as the doctor. Um, so I think I need to go shopping, but less for girl things and more... More revenge shopping. <laughs> so oh. I don't take kindly to anyone that hurts one of my family or oh. kills one of my family. Oh, oh, Bella, you do not need to worry because just because I look very frilly and high fashion, I do know a thing or two about the weapon and achieving what you would call vengeance. So I will be happy to assist you and accompany you. I would like that. Thank you. So, this is what I would like. You take your time, and I will have to ask of that too, Meta, for you to come with me, because Bella needs some time for herself, and when she is ready, she can summon however many of us she wants to accompany her, and we shall go out shopping for items to help her get her vengeance. That sounds like a plan. Yes. All right, then. So, my dear. I tell you, when you're ready, just let let Lumiere know, and he will call for me. Of course. Of course. Yes. And Meta gets up, and she, there is no argument from her. She immediately gets up from the bed and follows behind Marie. And they go out the door, and you hear Lumiere just, <laughs> Marie, Marie, I just, oh, Lumiere, you will have to wait your turn. And... <laughs> She gives one kiss on her lips to her finger and then puts it to his lips and he's just oh! and his whole flame body just turns pink and just oh, oh you know the way to light my flame, my dear. Oh. And she casually walks with just the same smile on her face. Bella, you have time yeah. to yourself. Excellent. Okay, once the door leading out is shut. Are there any windows in the room? Would you like there to be windows? Yes. Because as I said, this is your dream room. Yes, I would like there to be windows. Preferably what kind bay, of... Excellent. Excellent. So, so I'll go over to the bay window, and I will open it, and I will look out. How far down is the ground? You're expecting a big mass of drop down? Nah, the grass is like, it's normal window, like first floor. Like, not even first floor. It's just normal height down. It's like maybe... Excellent. Four feet. Excellent. Are there any nearby guards? Um, they, of course there are guards around, but they see you and they go, Hi, Miss Bella. You, you you, know you can do whatever you want. Well, if you need us, we'll be over there. Have a good day, Miss Bella. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'll go back into the room. I will gather up all my belongings. And then I'm going to jump out the window and just book it away from there. It's like, no, nope, everything's... Ha- Everything is too much. I need to go and think away from frilly stuff. You're running. You're running. No one's getting in your way. Like even like at one point, you're running in one direction, and a guard goes, "Um, Miss Bella, you turn around. If you're trying to go out, um, 
go. You're gonna need to go in the other direction. Okay, yeah, well, there, he, there you go. If, Good job. If he, yeah, if he tells me that, I will listen. But no, I just I need to get out. Um, and, she needs to get out and just away from everything right now. Probably not the smartest idea, but I, once again, she's woken up and every and the world has gone to shit, and it's like. Fuck this shit. No. Yeah. As you're running out these very beautiful palos, you go through just this giant courtyard of roses. Yeah. Just a massive field of roses that finally leads to the gate. And you're at what appears to be on like an island area. And then there's a boat and the ferryman goes, you, you need a ride to the other side, Miss Bella? Yes, please. Well, actually, so would you like to go to the town area or would you like more of the wilderness area the town area of course just go ahead and take a seat and relax and i'll get you there here look at you split and she gets in the boat and takes a seat and relaxes and just yeah it okay so you know the gondola boat ferryman yeah that's what he's doing he's at the end he's at the front of it with the very long oar and he's just singing a song Oh, perfect. And he's doing the, when the moon hits your eye. <laughs> yeah. And like, like, you see a little bird just goes, tweet, tweet, tweet. It lands, it lands on his, uh, on his oar. He does like a little whistle. It whistles back in tune with him and he keeps rolling along. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> and like, oh. as if to match your mood, the sky is even just a beautiful, well, you know what? Because this was still mid afternoon, so going into evening time now. So yeah. it's kind of an or- orangish purple, and it's just oh, gorgeous. Oh, that is so pretty. And when yeah. you get and when you get to the other to the other dock, and you notice that the town, the best way to describe it would be the town from Beauty and the Beast. Okay, how that's how it looks. Oh, that's that's so cool. And it's Thanks. just a buzz of energy, and you notice so many different races and species all just cohabitating together thank you thank you very much for this ah not a problem when you're ready to come when you're when you're ever you're ready or just he hands you a little whistle just give that a whistle i'll take it wherever you need to go all right that's my job thank you, thank you. and i and bella gets out and she heads into town it's even for evening time it's still a buzz with energy and where would you like to go first? Because it's, as I said, it's a, it's a typical town. There's merchants. There's a pub that is really bumping right now. Um, just she's gonna have a look around and see what 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 the merchants are selling. Um, out of character, how much money would would she have on her? You 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 really think the town people are gonna charge you a thing? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, saying that right now. You really yeah. think they're going to charge you? Uh, uh, yeah, true, true. Um, so yeah, so Bella will have a look around at the merchants and just see what's on offer. Um, so here, I'm going to ask a couple key questions here, and this is what's going to help me decide if you're the perfect merchant you're going to meet. So okay, you said so. You already answered one of them. You're looking for an item of revenge, correct? Yes. Would it be? Were you looking more for like? A weapon or just any kind of item that could help like um God, i'm trying to think of the correct wording a tool a weapon or yeah. a tool oh uh, she's she's looking for any kind of tool that would help with revenge like it doesn't have to be a weapon it just it just needs to be able to help somehow okay then well the merchants are actually happy to point you in the direction you need to go they point you to the mer- to the blacksmith okay i head over there now as you uh, approach this blacksmith, it's for one, you're just, hmm, you, you know what? I, I can't, I shouldn't judge, but this man looks like he could croak at any minute because he's bent like super far forward. His eyes are closed, are closed, and he has just this Fu Manchu mustache that goes all the way down to the ground. Yep, yep. And he has his arms behind his back. His two fists are cl- are touching together. He has them in fists and they're just behind his back um excuse me uh the townsfolk pointed me in your direction they said you might be able to help with what i'm looking for so you seek the best of the best you have good senses yes 
I am Aku, and Aku will be happy to provide you with the tools you need. Well, I'm looking for I... Yes? Oh. No, no, you go first. Well, I'm looking for something that could help me get revenge on someone. I, he killed my father figure, and I would desperately like to get revenge on him for that. It, it is complicated, but... And and I and I tell him the gist of the story. <clears throat> yeah, me inside of my workshop. Aku has what you need. You do? Yes. Aku must show you who Aku why he has the things he has. So please okay. follow me. Alright, and Bella follows Aku. So as Aku goes in, he starts to straighten up, but then his body starts to just turn blackish like as if it's a black flame and grow taller until he's about six foot nine and he looks like he has horns coming off the side of his head and he turns around and he kind of looks like he has the face of like a human mixed with a shishi dog with really long fangs i am the great warlock aku and my power transcends the plains and with my power i believe i can create the weapon you need I would be most grateful. What you need is a weapon that can pierce and damage even the primordials themselves. Aku can do this because Aku can reach through time. And the cost? Ku wishes to inhabit your eye. I want to see the end of your story. I seen every being's ending, but not you. I want your left eye. Let Aku have eye, and you have the weapon you want. What would happen if I give you my left eye? What exactly would happen? I will just see through your eye. That is all. I just want to see where your ending goes. That is all Aku desires from you. Do you accept my terms? Do I have time to consider this? Aku is as old as the dust in the wind. So of course, Aku does not mind waiting. Come back when you've made your decision. And Aku will provide. Thank you. You you have given me something to think about, yes. Yes. I, I wish you luck. With the rest of your endeavors? Hmm, that is correct. Because Aku still has a foolish samurai to deal with. And he just turns to look at a portal. If you wish to stay and see what he's looking at, you can. But go ahead and do what you wish to want, Bella. Um, I will give him a bow. And then I will exit. Um, there's Where def- oh. definitely something to think about there. <laughs> and You're... I have a and I have a funny feeling I know who the who that reference is to. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is my throat hurts so bad. <laughs> you caught me, David. You caught me, David. <laughs> so, uh, where would you like to go next? It's gotten to be twilight now. Um, and actually, that was actually a combination of two different references. So, Cat actually nailed the other one. Oh no, <laughs> that's actually true for both of them. Oh boy, um, uh, bookstore next it's for anything interesting that might be found there. Hello, well, welcome to to no one else. How can I help you, Brian? Can I? ask you not to do that voice it is quite literally just set my teeth on edge never mind all right so what it is it just literally looks like a humanoid slug lady in front of you okay she is the keeper of knowledge of this library yeah what do you want um anything interesting that you might have that i can either buy or read She's going to tell you that this is a very special library. It travels to planes. There is no buying. There is no purchasing of books. You just have to make the promise to return it. If said book is never returned or is destroyed in your possession, that's when the, well, all right, let me make sure I get this correct. Yeah. 
if you do anything and destroy the book, Orn will come for you. You know, having played Baldur's Gate 3 extensively, I'm really hoping that is not a certain villain from said game. Yeah. <laughs> so don't let anything happen to the book. God damn you. <laughs> God damn you, especially since I know exactly what she is. Yeah. Um, all right. I, I promise I, I promise I won't let anything happen to the book. Actually, there's a very good chance I will spend the entire night here just reading. She happily open like lifts the door for you to proceed deeper into the library, and the, it's as if the bookshelves are responding to your will. They move like rows of books are just <laughs> moving at super speed until you reach your hand out to grab a book, and they all stop. It's exactly what you would be looking for. So specifically, Excellent. what would be the? I'm, fir- I'm going to give you three books. What would be the first one? Any information on Thursday? Ah. The first book you come across is called The Enchiridion. Okay, and I am going to read that. You ready to have your mind blown? Yes, let's do this. So, um, The Enchiridion is a book that is given to all, like, God-level, God-tier beings. Beings that can warp reality. This is the physical book of laws and order uh, that is the reality wheel. Okay. But without the reality wheel, these laws cannot go into effect. And, and this encodes the entire history of all the planes in multiverse. Okay. And the so, way... Oh, sorry. So let me get this right. The reality wheel is the great cosmological wheel of which Bella is currently carrying around a piece of? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Continue. And as you look at the front of the Enchiridion... Curly in golden lettering is the words, don't panic. (laughs) And as you just turn to cover, the pages become animated. And they tell you the history of Thara's Dune. Okay. You see, the universe hasn't even been born. There's just this writhing mass of primordial beings. Just what people, some would even call monsters. Not even demons, just flat out monsters and they're just existing and in that moment there's just this tiny little one that's just emaciated and he's sitting there holding his legs to his chest and he just looks up to the sky and he lets out what sounds like a hum and here's the thing it's not like this monstrous howl it's this harmonious hum this beautiful like humming song and then all the other primordial creatures beings they all respond in kind and start doing the same type of humming and singing and bam the multiverses yeah. are born from this singing this hymn this hymn this music okay but when the little one that was clutching his legs he looks he's angry because this was supposed to be his that was his song he was going to create something for him no how dare you this was supposed to be mine ah. Do you take this? I'm the one that brought something beautiful. I'm the one who created the song of the universe. How dare you take this from me? So the little one grew strong, hungry. And over time, he would slowly encroach on one of his brethren and devour them. And through the devouring, he grew powerful, stronger, until he grew to the point where he could rival the gods themselves that came into existence from the belief and constructive will of er- of everyone who inhabits these multiverses. Ah. But he was too strong, too powerful, so they reached out to the only race that could exist, because in that ancient race of time, that small pocket, there were, in those monsters, there were these beings that you could equate to animals, and they created a plane that they called Humblewood. Okay. Reaching out to them, using forgotten knowledge and powers that are lost to those now they created the chains to lock Thar's dune away okay you see the moment that he offered reese everin's father help help to bring his sister back to find a way to that he could actually grab her soul and bring him back for her see everything leading up to the moment of the prison and there mm-hmm. you go you know the full history 
of Thar's doom. End of my universe. <laughs> I love it. So, you Bella, still know. <laughs> anything else you would like to know? The book is literally saying that as if it's talking to you. Yeah, um, I'm I'm thinking um, Zargon's weaknesses. And you see the words appearing, Zargon, the returner. Though you may be able to destroy his body, the, his true strength is in resurrection. But to impede him, to impede him to where he can never return to a place he's been, all you simply must do is break a piece of him off, like even like a piece of his horn, and he'll be forbidden to ever return. When you say, "Okay, from whence you came, you shall remain until you are complete again." Okay. It may not kill him, but it will keep him permanently banished away from this plane. Bella's mouth curls up in a smile. One that is not nice at all. (laughs) Now, I did tell you you are allowed two other books. Oh, I thought that was... um... Nope, that's just coming from the Enchiridion. Oh, okay, okay. I told you, this is the book of law and order. It will tell you anything you need to know you just had you chose correct in what you wanted okay um okay okay this is gonna be a long shot but Mm -hmm. is everyone still alive she's asking the book (laughs) bella does not know if as far as bella knows everyone died but she has her suspicions that the Solar King is not telling the full truth. So it's like, ooh, she has a fun book. Might as well ask. Yes. You just see the word, yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, I will shut that book. Um, okay. Um, hmm. For my second book, I think she will go for anything useful on fire magic. Any forgotten fire magic spells that she could learn or, or such like. Just some, something like that. I can't believe I actually get to use this. I'm so happy. <laughs> you find the perfect book ever. It's How to Fire Mage for Dubbies. And it's Ooh. written by Lumiere. You Ooh. see what looks like a little cartoon picture of Lumiere's head on the cover, on the front of it? Yeah. This has anything you could think of that you would need to know for fire magic. Excellent. Right. That will be a book I I will borrow for a day or two. Alrighty. And for the third book, hmm, hmm, she wants to know the history of tieflings because she's never seen another person li- like her. So she wants to know: was there a tiefling race? <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. The only book that appears is a biography about a wizard. Well, yeah, a wizard by the name of Merlin. Hmm. And she is going to read that book. This is fascinating. This biography that you're reading, you and this is when you're, I imagine your face is kind of doing a drop, like a jaw drop as you read. Yeah. As he says, my father, he was the forgotten twin brother to a certain abyssal by the name of Astaroth. And my mother was a celestial by the name of Mary. Okay. I, it's like I became a whole new entity, a whole new being called a tiefling. Yeah. As far as I know, I'm the only one of my kind. So mm. essentially what you're seeing is, yes, the only other tiefling in existence in my universe is Merlin. And as you're reading this biography, actually, I, well, technically they, you could consider them a tiefling, but there's something else now. Because as you see, he talks about having a son by the name of the seer. Okay. And he speaks about how this child is actually a third celestial, a third abyssal, and a third drow. So he's an even different form of tiefling. He's something even else now. Hmm. Yeah, Bella is soaking up all of this information. He documents how we are, that you are beings that transcend even some of the highest archons for the celestials. Ooh. That's why, and you see, that's why one day I was given a book by this entity by the name of Orn. He looked like a big, large body with an owl head with curved horns and taloned hands. And he handed me a book called the Enchiridion, saying, all beings of 
My stature and class have to have this, and I must follow these rules. Bella, everything's gone super quiet. Yeah. And what was just described in the book is standing in front of you. You are Oren. Yes. And that book I've been waiting to give to you. I don't like having to wait. Are you... That in Kyridian is yours. I have waited a long time to give it to you, young lady. Thank you. Yes. And please do be careful with the other two. Especially... Merlin's biography. He was a good friend of mine. Well, I don't plan on taking this one out. The fire magic one I plan to borrow for a day or two. I'm sure it will have some extremely useful tricks. Then might I recommend one last book for you? Of course. One from my personal library. I will be very careful with it, I promise. Alright, let me make sure I got the... Right name real quick. Okay, it is this is he hands you the Grimoire Infinitus. Grimoire Infinitus. Okay. There's a spell book that evolves and changes. Ooh. So technically, as long as you're holding the Grimoire Infinitus, technically a sorcerer. Yeah. And you get all those spell slots and such. Well, I already am a sorcerer. Oh, okay. Well you're just for whatever level you are, you get double now. Because you, because ins- that book gets its own set of spells. Ooh. I, I'm sorry. I should have said it's technically it's as if it's its own sorcerer by itself. Oh, okay, okay. Ooh. So and yep, and it just follows the same rules. It has the spell slots, but yeah, yeah. and it responds to whatever level you are. So the wild, you get to do that for that. Oh. But yes, Orin looks at you and goes, "That is another one you may have." I will I will keep I will keep it close and I will look after it. Hmm. My thanks. Yes, I haven't seen someone I have been as curious about as since I encountered Merlin. Oh. Yeah. I I see big things for you. Potential. Well, hmm. supposedly I'm going to be marrying Vazdun. But, but... Yeah. You we look shall. like someone that's beyond being for have things forced to her. Oh, exactly. So we shall see. Um, yes, that's exactly why I'm curious about you. <laughs> I will be watching, and if you ever need some knowledge, you know where to look, where to seek. And remember, I... names have power. They do. Yes. Thank you. When you're back, the library is back to normal. It's you actually can hear sound again. You can hear the bustle of the nightlife out in the city. Yeah. Um. One question about the biography of Merlin. Yes. Does it have any, even a scrap of information about um the fact that tieflings can apparently eat demons and devils to fuel their magics? And or get possessed if they get extremely unlucky. So Merlin's hypothesis is that you are that you would be essentially became like the apex predator of abyssals and demons, and that's the response is that for when a demon steps out of line, you can literally eat their soul, and that's mm-hmm. why the, you guys are an entity to fear, and that's why it was forbidden for abyssals, demons, and celestials to ever marry outside of their species. Oh. Extremely taboo. Yeah, the wheels are starting to turn in Bella's head because her, her as far <clears throat> as she knows, her birth mother, Denda, is a god. Mm, probably not a celestial. And her birth father is a, a Staroth um, who is a an abyssal. Yep. Oh. Hmm. That's a little something to tuck away for when she needs it. So, Bella. Yes? I'm going to do... So, actually, Phoenix, as a player, I'm about to really put you on the spot here. Because I'm giving you the narrative now. Yeah? You, and not just for a scene, I need you to paint what happens now over the course of the next three months for you. Okay. You have complete narrative control, by the way. Okay, well, firstly, Bella is absolutely going to study that uh, Fire Magic for Dummies book. Um, just making a note of any any useful fire spells 
and and or writing them down um thing and then of course she will return uh the book she, so the books she borrowed are you yeah. ready are you ready for this one yeah. once per long roost long use long, once per long rest you may now use once one time one use of meteor storm Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, fancy. Can you put that in a DM so I don't forget? I'm sorry, so, Meteor Swarm. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, oh, yes, I'm sending you the link right now. Excellent. Excellent. So you um, so you may see exactly what you have coming for you. You And remember, like I said, this is you get one use of this per long rest. Excellent. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I think... I mean, Bella is obviously going to return each night to sleep in uh, luxury. <laughs> look, she is a simple. She is a simple creature. She likes her. She likes her fancy bed. Um, but otherwise, no. She's going to spend time exploring the town. Um, is Link around? Well, guess what? As if to like really win you over, Link has been more than welcome to be in the town and 